Good morning, class. Welcome to today's lecture. First, I'd like to say, stop listening to Tom, Dick, and Harry, okay? They're not Peter, Paul, and Matthew. I don't know who Tom, Dick, and Henry is, or Harry, but I know who Peter, Paul, and Matthew is, okay? Now, before we get into today's lesson, we're going to talk about the dice itself, all right? You need to use the right dice to practice because this is your main tool. The casino uses a specific size dice, a specific size weight. Okay? I got my dice from casino4u.com. I'm not sponsored by them. I don't work for them. I'm not affiliated by them. Okay? They don't know me, you know? But um, that's where I got my dice from. They're the same dice as most casinos. They supply some of the casinos and stuff. That's what their advertisement says. And when I got my dice, I weigh them. I use a gram scale, ounce scale, you know, the stuff that they sell at Walmart. I don't work for Walmart either, and I'm not feeling better than them. I'm just saying this is where I get my stuff because the price is right, okay? Now, I weigh each dice so that way I know that there's no bias, all right? All my dice are numbered. Just like the dice to the casino. Now, if I walk into the casino with my dice in my hand and start flushing around, the box man is going to come and inspect my dice. And, you know, they're going to start raising some eyebrows. Um, how do I know? Because one of the guys I was hanging around with stopped bringing his dice around as one of his uh, toys as he wait for the turn to play. He started flushing around with the dice. And the... Uh, the box man came and started looking at the dice and inspecting everything. And he's telling us that I need to look at this because if they're the same thing, security's going to come. We're going to have a whole bunch of trouble. But luckily, the dice that he's using wasn't official dice. It had a hole in it because it was done. And it was somewhere from Vegas, one of the old casinos. But that just tells you, you need to use casino-regulated dice, okay? And you can't use the dice that has the hole already drilled in. Because that's how they cancel it. Because when you do that, one of the faces bias. All right, so, so go to casino4u.com, get your dice, get them, weigh them. Now when you buy your dice, I recommend you get two different color, okay? That way, you could keep eye on which is the left dice, which is the right dice, so it helps you train between your double pitching, off pitching, exploding, imploding, because the two different colors will help you easier to distinguish between the two. As soon when you get better, you can use one color to go through. Or you could bypass a double color, just use one color, but it's harder in your learning process. Now, as far as the alligator, the rubber alligator, the back wall, that's regulated too, okay? You can get that at the same site I mentioned earlier. And we know the height of the table, which is uh, 28 to 29 inches. And I'm shooting at a 20, uh, I mean, an 8 foot table with one open end, which gives me either a 6 foot, an 8 foot, 10 foot, 12 foot, or 14 foot table. See, I have the diversity. But most of it you find at a casino is either 10 foot, 12 foot, or 14 foot, okay? So, and then from the left wall to the right wall, you're looking at about 51 to 52 inches. So the diameter of the table in the box, the playing field, is very similar to the casino, okay? So we know what's on top. We know the alligator rubber diamond is exactly the same. We know the dimension is exactly the same. The height is exactly the same. What we don't know is what's underneath the fabric cover, all right? We don't know. We can't see through that. We don't have x-ray vision. Now, don't buy felt, okay? The felt cover is gone now. All the casinos are using a polyester cotton blend micro suede, all right? Now, how to set up your uh, crap tables cover? You'll find that at a casino for you too, and they'll explain all that stuff. 
but you want to get as close to a real world environment as possible. So we can't see what's underneath the cover, all right? Now, everybody try to draw and hit the back well, right? With a with a the chips are laid with the um the pass line don't pass line they try to hit that back wall. We don't know if that section is set up with a different material because we can't see through it, right? But not a lot of people hit the corner. Okay, so we know the corner doesn't have a lot of obstacles there, right? It's a clear shot. So we try to aim for that. When I started out, I used to aim for the stick corner. I used to shoot from the, the end of the table and I aim for the stick corner and I will bounce it off the mirror, you know, the glass. And when it hits that, it hooks you the opposite side and that keeps a long row. But um, they don't like that that much. They don't want you to break any glass, but you could do it that way too. But that's, that's random, okay? I'll talk more into that in the next lectures and stuff when we go in more detail. But let's get back to today's lesson. Today's lesson, we're going to talk about Another V set that not a lot of people talk about, okay, or people don't want to discuss it or they don't know about. We're going to talk about the offset V, all right? The offset V is like this, threes and two, because it's offset one side. If you're doing the three V, see the balance, right? Or the two V is um, balanced as well, right? The offset V is one side heavier than the other side, right? This is set up. Designed for a five, okay, and a nine. So this is, you could go this way, which gives you five, six, nine, eight, okay, inside. If you go, come on, if you go this way, it gives you five, twelve, nine, two. All right, so the offset V, here's your 5V, okay? It makes like a diamond, like a box, right? 2, 3, 3, 2 is designed for 5 to 9, okay? 9, 9, 5, 5. Like I said before, with the 2Vs and 3Vs, if you want to stick with that particular set, if you want to use the 5s, the, the offset V's, and it, this set doesn't work for you, rotate it, change it around. You still get five, five, nine, nine, right? Now, if this doesn't work for you, don't stick with that. Do this. You got five, twelve, nine, one, okay? If that doesn't work for you, do this. Okay. Nine, five, five, nine. Okay. There's different ways to do it. You just got to be versatile, right? Change your set around. Don't get stuck in one mindset. The only thing you got to be careful is this set right here. You got one, two, six, three, which gives you a seven, five, seven. So pay attention how you set these, these dice up. You got to pay attention not only just the top, but also the side, right? I don't hunt for fives and nine because it's a given, it comes in, it's not worth it. You either hunt for the 410 or the 68, okay? And the offset five, the offset V, right? It's the sister X as well to the two Vs and three Vs. Think of them as triplets, right? They behave similar to each other, so your SOR is slightly close to each other. Now, the only way to know for sure, if you practice and you experiment and you log it, okay? Like I said, each table works differently. Just because this, this set works on one table, don't expect it to have the same reaction on another table. Now, and how you hold it plays a big deal as well, okay? If you hold on the top, just barely touching, right? Right here, like that. It gives you a different reaction. If you go in the middle, it gives you a different reaction. It goes to the bottom, it gives you a different reaction. So the only way you know for sure is you experiment, you find out, okay? Like I said, five, five, 
999, okay? Sister set, right? If it explode, 12. Implode, okay? Two. Explode, pitch, eight. Double pitch, 10. Triple pitch, 11, all right? Implode four with a pitch three, double pitch five, triple pitch six. Okay, so it's it's more forgiving than the two V's and the three V's, but it has its danger. Okay, double pitch eight, triple pitch seven. Okay, single pitch six. And then it lands at seven, eight, okay. Single pitch, seven, double pitch, six. There's no way to avoid the sevens. It's in every single set. But you, some sets are more forgiving than others. Some set has more sevens in it, right? Drift, seven. Drift, seven. Drift really happened on a hard table, but on a... On a soft table, a bouncy table, it happens a lot. And it happens because when you land, you didn't land it on the right axle. You land either on the corner like that, and it causes the drift, okay? That's why we try to work on our rebound. When we have the dice, we have control. We set the dice, we're in control. We grip the dice, we're in control. The only time we lose control is when we let go of the dice, right? But we can control the accuracy landing part, the speed and power of the projectile. That's why I aim, try to hit the, the lower corner, the lower bottom push, the base of where the wall meets the tabletop. Because when it hits that, it has nowhere to go, but kicks it back. It can only bounce back, right? And then it control my rebound. That's all I work for. But every single practice that I work for, I work on controlling my rebound. The more my energy I can reduce the rebound, the more I can stick that landing like a gymnast, gymnastic, a gymnast and gymnastic, okay? So again, stop listening to Tom, Dick, and Harry and pay attention to what Paul, Peter, and Matthew has to say, all right? The dominator uses the hard way set, okay? He's rated eight in the world in craps. You know how many people there's in the world? We're talking about billions. How many people play craps? You know, a lot, right? But to be rated eight in the world, that's an accomplishment. And it's nothing special. He just put in the time and energy and dedication. He has a head, two legs, two arms, just like every one of us. And I'm pretty sure he puts his pants on the same way we do, one leg at a time. But the only difference between him and others is that he sees something he wants, he went after it, and he he put in the work, okay? There's no shortcut. So, show for practice. And I notice that some of you are not watching all the videos, which is a shame because you're cutting class. And from now on, I'm going to start dropping clues and details and Easter eggs in every single video just so you can watch them. That way, if you miss it, it forces you to come back and look at it because everything I tell you is important. You can't bake a cake when you only have half of an ingredient, okay? You need to know what the ingredients are, and you need to know what the measurements are as well. And you need to know how to use the ingredient with the measurement and the process. Now, you're going to say, oh, this doesn't work, X, 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 that, 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 right? But if you're only getting half of the info, you might miss the most critical part. Like I said, the amount of view that I'm receiving in the math doesn't add up to the amount of subscriber and it doesn't add up to the amount of watch per video, okay? That's telling me that somebody's skipping class and you're only hurting yourself. I'm going to tell you what I tell my student when I used to teach at a private university, okay? The first day of class when I got them, I tell them, whether you pass or you fail makes no difference to me. 
is still $50,000 per semester, okay? There's no discount for failure. If you fail, you can have to take the course over, and it's going to cost you the same amount of money. So it's your best interest to pass, okay? And I hope this will um, wake some of you guys up. If you're serious about this and you really want to live off casino money like I do, you need to start practicing on the right surface, the right table, the right measurement, with using the right tool, the right dice set. You need to simulate the environment as close as possible to the casino so that way there's no surprise. Hell, if your SOR is 20, you could chop that in half and know that when you're at the casino, your SOR will be 10. You could even chop that in half to 5. All you have to do is beat 6 roll, okay? So if you roll 1, you know you got it made. If you roll 2, you got it made, right? If you roll 4, take your bet down. Go back to the bed table minimum. Roll 4 more. Then take your bet down and go to the bed table minimum and, and just keep doing that. Because the math is a, is a sequence of 6, right? See, I have trouble rolling 16, 20, or 30 rolls in a row, right? But I know I can do 6. So once I do that first six, I tell myself I can do another six. And once I finish that second set of six, I tell myself I can do six more. And that's how I'm able to generate a higher SOR. Because at this point, my SOR is constant, solid, with confidence. I can do 14, right? But I pull my bed off at 10, right? And in these couple of days now, I'm pushing my SOR to 19, to 20, 21, 22. But I'm not confident that high yet. But like I said, once I get to 10, I pull my bet off. I bet the bed table minimum. And I just keep collecting. Same bet, same bet, same bet. Because I'm comfortable, right? But like I said, do do three or four rolls, take your bet off. Do another three or four rolls, take a bet off. And the reason why we change set when we max out an SOR on that particular set is so that way we could reset the math for our hands. Because if you're rolling, let's say you're rolling the V set, and your SOR is 6, or the math is 6, right? Once you hit 6, you change it to a 9, 6 set, right? Now, that whole math reset itself, because if you stay with the same V, the math's going to catch up with you. It's going to say, for every 36 roll you make, there's going to be a 7 in there, right? Why? Because this variable doesn't change. It remains constant. But when you change the variable, the math changes. Okay, you keep the math at bay. You keep them guessing. That's why I go from a four two, right? I go from a four two two four. I do four five six of these, right? A nine. Then I switch to a six three three six. I do a couple of those. Then I switch to a six five. I mean five 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 six five three. You know, I keep switching when I hit six or something like that. I do that. The only different, the scariest part is you don't know how the table is going to behave. So before you switch, take your bet off, switch, then add again, you know. Instead of betting all the box number, bet only 6 and 8. Switch set. So if you crap out, you're not losing a lot of your bankroll, okay. So that ends today's lesson. And I'll see you again when we discuss another set. So pay attention to the, um, try out the, uh, the offset V, okay? They're designed for fives and nine. All right, see you next time. Take care.